Okay, everybody ready? Everybody should be writing this down, whether you have your paragraph or not. All right. Okay. So this is a different um, type of paper because this is one of your few two-topic papers. All of your other papers only have one topic. This paper has two. That's what makes it challenging. So because of that, your outline is going to change just a little bit. Okay? Let me um, make sure my brain is operating at normal capacity. I'm going to have it open because I made it last night. What? Okay. So, let, let's take for instance that, as an example, that my uh, paper is going to be that uh, between cats and dogs. Okay? So let's go between, you know, cats and dogs. So my Roman numeral one might be... Cats. Uh, sorry. There we go. Okay, so cats cats differ from dogs in many ways. It doesn't have to be exactly like this, but remember that we do need our topic sentence conclusion formula. So what's our number one? Topic. Our topic. What's our number two? Pattern of, Pattern of organization. What's our number three? Point or argument you're trying to make. Okay, so let's look at my topic sentence. Let's identify our one, two, three. So where's our one? Cats, dogs. Okay, what's my two, my pattern of organization? Differ. Okay. And what's my three? Right, so differ in many ways is my number three. So notice that it is going to be illustrative in nature because I'm going to support it with examples, many examples, right? But it's overall comparison and contrast. So now we need to set that up. Okay, Lord, did you have your paragraph and outline? Okay. Okay. Need some work. Yeah. Okay, I see bunches of paragraphs that are completed, but outlines that are not. Remember that you can't make your paragraph without your outline. You, do, you don't drive to California if you don't have a map to get there. Okay? You, you can, but it's not going to be any fun. <laughs> it's probably going to take a couple extra weeks. All right? Weeks. <laughs> weeks. So we want to make sure that, that you're getting where you need to go in the least amount of time, the least amount of effort, saving the most gas. Does that make sense? Okay. So, I now know that I have my one, two, three, so my topic sentence is intact, so now I can begin to formulate my argument. Okay? Everybody should be writing something down. Marlon, you don't look like you're writing. I'm looking at a book. Is that my dollar? Because I can come get it if it's collection time. It's just, it's, no. Okay. I was in philosophy. All right. Okay. So now we need the body. So our first sentence has two topics, correct? Because we're doing point-by-point point method, not subject-by-subject subject method. So because we're doing point-by-point point method, we need to balance our seesaw of information. So every sentence needs to have cats on one side and dogs on the other. Make sure to write any of this down that helps you to understand. So, my number one is going to be cats. My number two is going to be dogs. Comparing. Am I comparing them? No. What am I doing? Contrasting. Contrasting them. Yes. Okay. Now, of course, by now I've done some brainstorming that you can't see, right? I've done the comparison, the things that cats have in common with dogs, and I've done the differences, things that cats do not have in common with the dogs. 
But what we need to be very careful about is, again, balancing this seesaw. If the first thing that we are going to compare are the ears of cats to the ears of dogs, then we need to make sure we're comparing ears on both. Do you see it? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm a little confused. I thought usually you're supposed to go A and then you do your ones and your twos or whatever. But <laughs> right, but remember that's subsection. with a single single topic paper. We're doing two topic papers. So okay. our one and our two, these are two things that we're going to discuss in our paper, correct? But we need to talk about what of that one and two we're going to support on each side. So the next one might be the eyes. This is my first detail sentence. So here's my topic sentence. Here's my first detail sentence. So then, oh, not what I meant to say. Sorry. Now I need my second detail sentence. Does everybody see it? Mm. What's my number one going to be? Cats. Cats. Good. What's my number two going to be? Dogs. Dogs. Then whatever my A is here, I also have to talk about my A here. So let's say that I talk about, I don't know. Tails. I could. Ah, uh, don't know about that. Maybe. Teeth. Okay. All right, noises. Okay, so let's say, you know, that we meow, bark, okay, but then we start running into problems because we, they both growl, right? Mm -hmm. One purrs. Well, one hisses and one growl. Yeah. They both growl. You can't just substitute a different sound just because you don't want to use the sound they have in common. Oh well, no, I was just saying that. What is a different sound though? It, it is. It's a completely different sound. If you said that a, do that a dog growls, what's the equivalent sound a cat makes? It hurts. They growl. They growl. Cats growl. But if I said that cats hiss, what's the, what's the same, what's the, the, the related sound a dog makes? The growl. There is none. There isn't one. So there's not a growl or a cat dog. Right. So what we could say is if we wanted to is instead of, um, you know, even then with the meowing, I'm, typically cats often meow when they're just communicating. Dogs bark when they're communicating when they're protecting, right? But we could also say that cats <coughs> growl and hiss, whereas dogs bark and growl. Can you just talk about... One's a lion and one's a wolf. Oh, you can't because they're not all necessarily directly related any longer. So many of them have been too domesticated. Um, are you doing A as how they look and two how they sound? Or, I mean, or, or B how they sound? How about size? Well, no, that doesn't work. I don't get how you outline. Well, I mean, okay, and that's because I'm still in basic outlining mode, right? Notice I haven't given any details, I'm still describing. Okay? So again, my ears on most cats are what? Pointed. Pointed. And where? On head. Right, on top of head, right? Oh, I was just scared. <laughs> so just guess. <laughs> okay. But for um for dogs, what is the, for most dogs, not Floppy. your Yeah, so most of them are considered floppy, right? So floppy ears. And yeah. where are they located? Side. Yeah, more on the sides of their head, right? Regardless of the breed. Does everybody see it? So eyes on a cat. How would you explain how they look? Yeah, they're usually very, very close to each other in the front of the face, right? Okay? Dogs are more to the side, right? 
And and what's the shape of cat's eyes? Isn't it like diamond-ish? Yeah, Not they're really diamond, but it's like more. They're more of an egg shape. Like an edged oval. Yeah. Okay. So edged oval. And dogs are just circles. Yeah, dogs are circles. Yeah, and dogs are typically more circle shaped, right? C R C L E. There we go. I know my C looks like a L. I'm sorry. Is everybody starting to see how the how the outline is taking shape? Okay. What you're also realizing is that this is by far one of the most detailed outlines we've done so far. And that's because in order to do comparison or contrast, you have to include a lot of detail. It's going to sound like very descriptive. It is. It's going to sound quite descriptive, but remember that we're using the description as a tool. And so that tool is going to be get to, to get to what? Go for it, Kevin, just try it. What's the purpose of the tool of description here? Uh, what, what's our point? There we go. All right, so we're using the description to show how different they are. So we're using it as a tool to do our contrast. Does that make sense? So it looks like we are just describing cats and dogs here, but we're not. We're specifically describing the same thing on each to show their contrast with each other. Does that make sense? All right. So then the hard part comes about making the sentence. Okay, so we're going to pretend that I'm done with my entire outline. Okay, which again looks like this for A, B, C, D, and E. Whoa. That's yes. a long paper. Not really. But you do have to find a topic that's that's can still, still be sustained between five comparisons and contrasts. Is that what cats involve? So, no, talk about whatever you want. Wait, is that one more time? This is a very first time. about A, B, C, D? Okay, so what, what this looks like right here, A, 1, A, and 1, 2, A, and 1, okay? This is what your outline should look like for A, B, C, D, and D. But it's page is one sentence. But it's just one sentence. Is everybody ready to see how this works? Is this going to be kind of together? Kind of, kind of nope. Not if you know, do like it well. Not if you do it well. It's just going to be. Nope. Not if you do it well. I don't think it word. Jeez. No. Summarized. No. Yeah. There's nothing abbreviated about, about this, or it wouldn't be this detailed. No, in a paper. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> I'm all the entire time. All right. Everybody ready? So my topic sentence is, cats differ from dogs in many ways. For example, because I need an introductory expression, right? Okay, for example, cats typically have pointed ears on the tops of their heads, but dogs usually have floppy ears on the sides of their heads. Oh, sorry, I forgot about the eyes. Okay, so does it sound like I can fit in the eyes? No. I mean, like, you would typically, like, after their head, like, they have pointed ears and how their eyes are. Uh-huh. But they'd be, like, so long, wouldn't you? Exactly. So notice that it begins to get wordy really quickly. Right? So what do you think I should maybe do with my outline at this point? So where 
allowed to use their? T-H-E-I-R? It's never been on the no-no list. You are allowed to use all third-person pronouns. He, she, it, or they, and any pronoun derivations of those. T-H-E-R-E -E is the one you are not allowed to use. Their T-H-E-I-R has never been off the list, or on the no-no list. Okay, so I'm going to take this off of here. You guys didn't put, tell me I put that in the wrong spot. Okay. okay. And then I would move my meow and bark to C, correct? Mm -hmm. So we don't have to have like an A, B, C for each letter. Right? Not, some of you have something that's extremely <coughs> simplified that you can do that with. Some of you have something more complex. You've got to keep it lesser than this. And you'll figure it out. So you have to have an A through E? You have to have A through E because you still have to have a seven-sentence paragraph. If you have a Roman numeral one, which this is what I saw with a lot of you. I saw a Roman numeral one, Roman numeral two, A and B, and a Roman numeral three. You just told me you have four sentences in your seven-sentence paragraph. Remember, you have to have A through E because A through E are your body detail sentences. Now, these both need to be in the same sentence. This is point by point. If you look at your paper right now, read your detailed sentences. If one whole sentence is about cats and the next whole sentence is about dog, you did subject by subject. We're not doing that in here. We don't have an even structure here. So go through your paragraph right now and decide if it's point by point or subject by subject. If it's subject by subject, then you can't do that. You need to go home and fix it. It needs to be point by point. So basically, each sentence has to compare between the two, the two different things that yep. you're talking about. Yes, so basically, each sentence is going to have both topics in it. Yes. If you have a sentence that only talks about one of your topics, then that's subject by subject, not point by point. Now, if we only had um, six sentences, we could do that because then we're giving equal time to cats and equal time to dogs. But when we have an odd number of sentences, like we do here, seven sentences, then we would give more time to one animal than the other. Now, what a lot of you probably did is you did all about cats, all about dogs, all about cats, all about dogs, and then about both of them. That doesn't work. You can't mix it in a paragraph. How you start is how you finish. So you either start subject by subject and finish subject by su subject, or you start point by point and you finish point by point. You can't have it mixed up in the same paragraph. They're two separate patterns of organization within comparison contrast. In a larger essay, sometimes block method is better, where you do subject by subject, where you do one whole paragraph about cats, and then you do one whole paragraph about dogs. The only problem is, is especially in the, the larger your writing goes, the easier it is for your reader to forget what they're reading about. Because if they read a whole paragraph about cats, when they get to the end of that paragraph, what do they expect to continue to read about? Cats. So when you suddenly and spontaneously switch to dogs, then it rocks the boat. They don't understand what just happened. So be very careful about um, making larger papers that way. But sometimes something needs a good amount of history and explanation and things like that. So you, you do one whole side of the paper one way and you do one whole side of the paper the other way. It's not a healthy habit, though. Be very careful falling into that trap. You can do research on the computer and do research about yeah, I fully encourage you guys to do research. Just make sure it's common knowledge when you write it. Common knowledge research. If you are giving me 90% of cats have ears on tops of their heads, that's, that's specific research. You need to cite that number from somewhere. I don't know. Um, but so, it, so if you're giving me specific numbers, you've done specific research that needs citations and in-text citations, work cited page. I'm not teaching that in here. I'm just trying to get you guys through structure. Okay, I'm not teaching MLA formatting in here as far as that's concerned. 
So the only thing I'm teaching in here is how do you how do you solidify your argument? How do you format your argument for this type of paper? How do you write the paper from beginning to end? That's what I'm teaching in here. So you're looking for common knowledge research. Yeah. What I'm thinking is uh, I was going to talk about two different uh, football. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be a lot of numbers in yeah, just be really careful that they're common knowledge numbers, like how many players are on a team or how large a field it is, that kind of thing. Does that make sense? But no, if you no. start talking about statistics and scores, that's probably careful. Because then you're, you know, because you didn't just come up with those numbers, you got to go research them. Right. Yeah. So be very careful because I, I want, I'd prefer you guys to do common knowledge rather than specific. Javier. So if I was to do like a, like, like a topic based on hip-hop music dating from today and from, like, back in the 80s. Uh-huh. Would that be a good topic to do as far as compare and contrast? You can't ask me if any topic is good or bad. Um, what I'm going to tell you is you have to be very specific about what you are saying, and music is difficult to put on paper. Does anybody know why? It's sound. It's sound. You it. Yeah, you can't hear it. Uh, so be very careful about doing music. Styles are also really difficult because you can't see them. So things that are predominantly things that you can hear or see, you have to be very, very, very careful about. Kevin. I'm doing like similar to this, like comparing two players, and I have, if I say like, you know, like their weight and their height, is that specific and like how to source that? Or if I you guys want to do those two topics, I'm okay with it. Just be very careful. Does that make sense? Most people know that Muggsy Bogues is 5'4". Like, you know, know, he has like, a higher chance of scoring than person. Like that, right. Like, yeah, as long as if it's just basic information, to be honest, most of you know so much about your favorite players, you would know how tall they are and how much they weigh. That's practically common knowledge. Lots of countries. Yeah, go for it. Uh, you could do college to university. You could do CPCC to UNC Charlotte. Or no, some of you are... College to high school. Yeah, you, that's you can do college to high school, absolutely. Be very careful that you don't put in your assumptions, mm -hmm. like your assumptions, that the ass out of you and me assumptions. Um, and make very be very careful you don't put your opinions in there. Things like easy or hard, mm, careful. Okay? Um, some of you are thinking about transferring to different schools. There may be two in your top three list that you're interested in. If you want to compare those two schools, go for it. Does that make sense? Um, so there's lots of things that you can compare or contrast. Be really careful with similarities, though, because you still have to balance the seesaw. You can't just say both offer blah, blah, blah. You have to tell me what one offers and what the other one offers. It's going to seem very, very, very repetitive, but I need you guys to get into the seesaw style of writing. Could, could one be Air Force and Army? Yeah, yeah, you can very easily do Air Force and Army. Yep. Do you do small businesses and uh, you know, corporations? You, know, you very well could. Just, again, be really careful about opinion. Because yeah. opinion loves to trickle into those things. No opinion, no assumptions. No opinion and only educated assumptions. <laughs> but no opinion, no assumings. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And the assuming usually gets rid of the ass out of you and me one. Okay. Now, let's look at this sentence for just a moment. Because what I used as my contrast, what is my contrast key term in here? But, mm -hmm. so but is my contrast key term in here. There are lots of different things that I can actually do to this sentence because it's two complete sentences. So between one and two, we have two complete sentences. You have two complete sentences. That's part of why the both, you know, both offer blah, 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 blah. That's one complete sentence. I need two, okay? Because then what you're going to do is you're going to start fiddling around with your, um, joining techniques here. There's some different things we could do. So I did a comma and a but, right? What else could I do here? I could do although. Well, although is, is different. Although often looks better at the front than in the middle. We could do whereas. Whereas is a tricky one because to my knowledge it can be punctu It's one of the few conjunctions that can play more than one part. So typically it's a subordinating conjunction. So because it's a subordinating conjunction, there's no punctuation at all. 
Occasionally, though, you have such complete thoughts that it requires a uh, semicolon and a comma. What it never gets is just a comma. So most of the time, treating it without punctuation is the best way. We can't use while, right? Um, you can, but while typically indicates time, not contradiction. In contrast. Right. Now, do you know, Khadija, the punctuation for in contrast? Comma. Nope. Oh, oh. semicolon. Oh, oh. Yay. Semicolon and comma. Can you just do a semicolon? No. Because um, if I do just the semicolon without the comma, I have in contrast dogs. Oh, no, I mean without in contrast or the extra comma. Just ah, so Khadija hit the other one. Yeah. Could also use just a semicolon. So everybody's seeing the options here? See. Okay. So he's looking confused back there. Everybody should have this. Okay, so these are all your options for joining these two sentences together. Does that make sense? Okay. So some of you are going to need to look up subordination coordination. They should be in the grammar section in Blackboard. So the grammar, is it, it says grammar information, I think, right? And it should have subordination coordination in there. There might even be a video. Okay, so make sure you're getting the information. And the charts are also in uh, class info or unit one. I don't know. I don't remember which one. Okay, so there's lots of different ways to join these two sentences together. Okay, I could also have put an although at the front here, instead of for example, I could have put although and then nothing here. Because that would be subordination on the back, dependent clause, independent clause. Okay. So questions about how the outline works. Okay. Michelle, this is yours, right? You okay if we look at it? Yeah. Okay. It's just not really right. It's okay. 